Functions are an awesome concept that is important in computer programming and mathematics. They are so powerful that you can even create programming languages and entire mathematical systems where everything is built out of functions. In future videos, I'm going to use functions to show how big data companies process data and show that women are people who identify as women is philosophically justified. If there is enough of an audience for it, I might even do a series explaining type theory. Rather than explain functions over and over again, I'm going to make this introductory video just about them. When you turn the steering wheel of a car, the tires of the car move a corresponding amount. Every point on a map has a corresponding point on the territory. In every frame of a computer animation, an object has a corresponding location. When mathematicians see a pattern like this, they like to factor out the common elements. All of these types of correspondence can be abstracted into a common concept of a function. In order for something to be a function, it needs to express a relationship between an input value and an output value. What kind of thing a function takes as its input is called the function's domain, while the kind of thing a function returns is called its codomain. Here is an example. This is a graph representing the function that takes a whole number of frames that have passed and returns a floating number representing the rotation of an object. In order for something to be a function, it must have an output for every possible input that is in the domain, and that output has to be consistent. A function's domain and codomain can be almost anything, including other functions. Because the domain and codomain are so important describing what a function is, we call this the function's signature, or its type. We normally write a function signature like this. The name of the function, followed by a colon, what the domain is, then an arrow, and then the codomain. And we read this signature as foo takes d to c. What if we want to have a function that takes two arguments? Well, like a fanfic writer, we use pairs. Who takes x cross e to c? We can treat operations like addition and multiplication as functions that take two arguments. Functions are allowed to have two different inputs go to the same output. But if we have a special function where every input goes to a different output value, we call that an injective function. The way I remember this term is that the domain is injected into the codomain. You can have functions where there are elements in the codomain for which there are no input values that can reach them. However, if a function is able to cover all of the codomain, we call that function surjective. I remember this by thinking that the domain is dominating over the codomain and making the codomain call it sur. If a function is both injective and surjective, then we call it Bijective. Bijective functions can go both ways. Each bijective function has an inversion. A function from the codomain back to the domain, which undoes the original function. The mathematical definition of quantity, how much of something there is, is called cardinality and is based on bijunctions. Two sets are defined to have equal cardinality if there is a bijunction between them. If you have watched my what a real number really is video, you will know that adding to structure to sets is important to maths. Well, if a domain and a codomain both have structure and the function that goes between them keeps that structure, we call it a morphism. Say your domain is the number of seconds since the first day of January 1970 and your codomain is date time in ISO format. The only acceptable formats to represent time. Both the domain and the codomain sort the same way. So 
this conversion function is a morphism. The word morphism comes from the stem morph, meaning shape, because morphisms keep roughly the same shape of the thing that they are relating. When a function is both bijective and a morphism, then it is called an isomorphism. Isomorphisms are incredibly useful. What you can do is use the forward function to convert an object in one domain to an equivalent object in the codomain. Then do some sort of operation on it. Then use the inverted function to convert it back. And then you know what the equivalent operation in the original domain would have done. Often doing a thing in an isomorphic environment is so much easier. For example, a territory is isomorphic to a map of that territory with relation to scale, distance and bearing. So you can convert your current location in space to a point on map, then move the point on the map a certain distance and bearing. Then when you convert it back, you will know where you would end up if you moved like that in real life. This is why some people call morphisms maps. The people who do this are sowers of confusion and chaos. They must be stopped. In mathematics and computer science, there are at least 10 similar th but distinct things called a map or a mapping. It is needlessly ambiguous. So, once again, functions are a relationship between a domain and a codomain in which every element of the domain goes to an element in the codomain, but not more than one element. If every element in a domain goes to a unique element in the codomain, then it is an injective function. If every element in the codomain has at least one domain element going to it, then it is a surjective function. If it is both injective and surjective, then it is a bijective function. If structure is maintained, then it is a morphism. If it is a morphism and a bijection, then it is an isomorphism. I hope this video will be helpful to you and please subscribe to me showing you all the wonderful things you can do with functions.